Okay, so I was scrolling your social media, and uh, you are helping Ukrainian cricket, uh, Ukrainian kids learn cricket. And uh, do you feel that sport will help people to recover from the trauma of terrors and with an enthusiastic approach and positive mindset? Will it help people? Oh yes, I've just got to look at my own life. Everything I've done, people, you know, actually it's probably irrelevant, but they in October there will be a documentary released, uh, War Dogs and I, uh, on this journey. It's really captured the imagination of a lot of people, especially in India. I've got a fantastic support in India, people following me on social media, uh, media uh, coverage in India, uh, mm -hmm. where people really relate to my story. And uh, we're bringing out this documentary now in October. And, you know, uh, I, so it's a book and a documentary. And a lot of people say, and the theme of this is basically this brave, strong guy that fought for his dogs, which, I mean, that part is true. I never gave up on my dogs, but everything I did in the past four months to never give up, always find a way. That, that were all, that's all life skills I learned through my years of playing cricket. You know, you never give up. You play till the last ball. The game is not over until the last ball has been bowled. I did a lot of coaching. I captained most teams I played for. Mm -hmm. And that was always my number one. I told guys when their heads go down, guys, on the cricket field, you never give up. So those life skills. And at the moment, these kids, um, you know, to sit, they're so traumatized. You can't sit with them, say, in a classroom and just communicate. It's, it's almost impossible. They, they nowhere in this in the state of mind they the space they in is just not anywhere ready for a conductive conversation about life skills or or anything like that but when they're in the park they completely forget for two hours they just normal kids playing cricket in a park and you hear the sound of children laughing and you know screaming and and it's unbelievable to see this especially if you know where they come from you know, I, I, I was in Kiev. I was there for 10 days with uh, mattresses up against my window, uh, hiding in my bathroom, sleeping in my bathroom next to a washing machine with my dogs, uh, playing loud music on my laptop for my dogs so they don't get too uh, traumatized by the sound of the explosions that were coming from, from Irpin and Bacha. So um, I've been there, but these kids, you know, I'm an adult. For these kids, they're four or five years old. and how they experience this war. Most of our refugees here, funnily enough, comes from Kharkiv. And these kids and their moms were in bomb shelters. Two, three weeks ago, a month ago, they were sitting in bomb shelters in Kharkiv, listening to the explosions and to, I mean, Kharkiv is, is basically destroyed. So these people, they arrived here with their moms because the fathers can't join them. Uh, all men between the ages of 18 and 60 in Ukraine, they, they call it fighting age. They're not allowed to leave the country. They have to stay there. And most of them are now already being called up to go and serve in the, in the military in Donbass. So once they hit the Donbass, the war zone, they're not allowed to use their mobile phones at all because it gives their uh, positions away to the, to the Russians. Uh, so there's no communication between these children and their moms and the fathers. So they don't know if their father's still alive. If he's, if, you know, they don't know where he is in Donbass. And, you know, you can, you can't even begin to imagine the, what they're going through.